This sulfate-free shampoo bar is made with a hefty dose of rice starch to combine the benefits of a rice water rinse with shampooing in an easy, no-fuss bar. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. Before we dive into making the shampoo bar, I'd like to remind you to check out the full partner blog post linked below for even more information. But let's get started. What is a shampoo bar? Functionally, it's shampoo, just solid. It is a product that you use to wash your hair and you can also use it to wash your body. The ingredients are very similar to the ones that you'll find in liquid shampoo. The balances are just different so that we end up with a solid product instead of a liquid one. To make the shampoo bar and to work with solid surfactants in general, a well-fitting dust mask is an absolute must. Solid surfactants become airborne really easily and inhaling them is unbelievably unpleasant. So make sure that your dust mask really fits onto your face, that you can tighten it down and it really seals well because if it doesn't, you will know within a moment of opening that bag of solid surfactants as you feel detergent. Uh, floating down your airways and oh just yuck. You will also need a pair of nitrile gloves for this formulation as we're going to be mixing things together with our hands. Formulation wise, shampoo bars and other Sindet bars are primarily comprised of solid ingredients. That is why they are solid. <laughs> the ingredients in this formulation can be divided up into dry ingredients and wet ingredients. The first dry ingredient in this shampoo bar is 40 grams of finely powdered sodium cocal isothionate. This is a wonderfully gentle anionic surfactant made from coconut oil. It contributes really dense, rich lather to our bar along with gentle cleansing and is our star surfactant. If your sodium cocal isothionate is in a larger, chunkier form, please run it through your DIY only coffee grinder to turn it into a powder before proceeding. Our second dry ingredient is 23 grams of sodium lauryl sulfoacetate, or SLSA. This is another gentle anionic surfactant that further amps up the lather we get from the sodium cocal isothionate. Despite the similar sounding names, SLSA is absolutely not the same thing as SLS. It is much milder and is EcoCert certified. The reason I'm not using just SCI for this formulation is because it is limited to just under 50% in rinse off applications. For more information on this, please make sure you're looking up SCI in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia. Our last dry ingredient is 15 grams of rice starch. Rinsing the hair with rice water has been done for centuries in Japan and China. It is said to help protect and detangle the hair while promoting hair growth. Including rice starch right in the formulation combines shampooing with your rice starch rinse in a really easy package. Our first wet ingredient is 11.99 grams of cocomidopropyl betaine. This liquid amphoteric surfactant helps boost flash foam and and make the overall surfactant blend milder. Four grams of hydrolyzed rice protein helps volumize and moisturize the hair. Five grams of camellia seed oil is our refatting ingredient, helping ensure that the shampoo bar doesn't leave the hair feeling dry or stripped. I chose light and silky camellia seed oil made from the plant that gives us tea because camellia seed oil also has a long history of being used in hair care in Japan and China. 0.4 grams of fragrance gives this bar a really lovely smell. This level of fragrance will impart a wee bit of scent and to your hair, but not a whole heck of a lot. I'm using Brambleberry's Wildflower Honey Fragrance Oil, which was inspired by the L'Occitane Honey and Propolis scent. You can definitely use a different fragrance oil or essential oil, just make sure you are working within IFRA guidelines. For reference, this is a Category 9A product. Please reference the blog post for some links to learn more about this. 0.5 grams of Liquid Dermal Plus is our preservative. You could definitely use a different preservative if you like. Again, refer to the blog post for more information. 0.1 grams of Vitamin E helps delay the onset set of rancidity. And lastly, 0.01 grams of a water-soluble dye gives this bar a little bit of color. Since 0.01 grams is really hard to measure out accurately, I'm just going to dip a glass stirring rod into the little baggie of dye, get a little bit of product on that, and then stir that glass rod into the cocomidopropyl betaine so the water in the cocomidopropyl betaine can dissolve the dye, and then we will carry on. All of this together will make a 100 gram shampoo bar, which is a pretty sturdy shampoo bar and will last you a good long time. Making the shampoo bar is honestly a lot like making pasta dough. We'll begin by stirring the dry ingredients together in a bowl, making sure that you have your dust mask on and that it is cinched on nice and tight. We'll then make a little well in the middle of those dry ingredients and add all of our wet ingredients. Begin stirring the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and once that has become kind of unworkable with a spoon, get in there with your gloved hands and knead everything together until you have a smooth uniform dough. Once you have that dough, shape it into a bar. You can do this just with your hands 
you can press it into a silicone or as some other type of mold, or you can use a press. It's totally up to you. And once you have that bar, leave it on a shelf to dry and you are done. So why do we leave the bar to dry? This bar contains about 11.5% water from the cocomitopropyl betaine and the hydrolyzed rice protein, both of which have a fairly significant water content. We need to leave the bar to dry out slash age so that some of that water can evaporate off, giving us a nice hard bar that will last a good long time in the shower once it starts getting wet and used. I recommend leaving this bar to dry for about three to four days, during which it will lose about 3% of its weight and will become really, really hard. When it comes to shelf life, I have been experimenting with this formulation and one similar to it since the summer of 2020, and I have never had a bar go bad on me. Be sure to let the shampoo bar dry out completely between uses, and you shouldn't have any issues using this entire bar without anything going dodgy on you. To use a shampoo bar, massage it directly into soaking wet hair. Work up a lovely lather and proceed as usual. I recommend following up with a handmade conditioner bar. Check out my passion fruit coconut conditioner bar for a really lovely formulation. And that's it. We just made a gorgeous sulfate-free rice starch shampoo bar. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please remember to read the full partner blog post linked below for heaps more information and I'll see you next time. Bye!